I'm average height, eye shaped, with a narrow build and delicate features. As I've grown older, my appearance has become less waifish and more fragile, vulnerable and inconsequential. What are good ways to convey strength through clothing? Are there particular lines, fabrics, colours or patterns that convey strength and presence that are appropriate for someone with delicate features? Bold statement pieces seem to overwhelm me. I'm not so much afraid of appearing as mutton dressed as lamb, but retired show poodle dressed as junkyard dog. That's quite funny. I like that expression. So when we are thinking about how do I look stronger, this is where the concept of yin and yang is so useful to consider. So if you think about it, your appearance is naturally more yin. So to add that strength, we need to add yang elements in. And I do have a blog post all about is how we read different design and aesthetic lines in yin and yang. And so you can have a look at that on the blog. But if, you know, if some examples of if sheer is more yin, opaque is more yang. So think about opaque fabrics rather than sheer fabrics. Heavy weight is more yang, light weight is more yin. Curved lines are more yin, straight lines are more yang. So you can think about adding straight lines. It could be a straight pattern. It could just be a striped you know, shirt or something. It's a more yang appearance. It doesn't have to be a big bold stripe, but it's still a stripe. Vertical, interestingly, is more yang versus horizontal is more yin. Uh, we can think about, you know, kind of the difference between, you know, like, you know, uh, big bold patterns versus small delicate patterns. So small delicate patterns are more yin and big bold ones are more yang. But you could think about, well, a more straight line pattern. So a small check is still more yang than a small floral. Um, if we are thinking about that kind of yin and yang. And I always remember watching the TV show Mad Men. I don't know, many of you may have watched this a few years ago. It was a fantastic show and I used to love the, the, the costumes. And one of the interesting things about the costumes of the female characters was that they really used these concepts to explain kind of the personalities of each of the the. Um, the, the characters and Peggy who was the woman in the man's world so she became the advertising executive she was always dressed dressed in like check dresses so straight dresses so straight up and down rather than fit and flare so if you looked at Betty she was all fit and flare um, which was a much more feminine shape so we think about that's that curved line the more feminine shape versus Peggy who was the woman in the man's world was always dressed in the straight up and down the shift dress um, the more fitted straight up and down. Her dresses also were like checks and other, you know, much more masculine patterns versus Peggy's were, you know, polka dots and butterflies and, and, you know, and those sorts of things and florals. So we're thinking about that kind of more yin Betty versus that more yang Peggy. So even though Peggy wasn't a big person, they gave her, you know, the more masculine elements of, you know, clothing in those in that kind of day and age to think about as far as like that was expressing her she was a, a strong woman in a in a man's world uh so you can think about like checks rather than florals or it could be a higher contrast versus a lower contrast uh so a higher contrast is always more yang uh you know, cool colours are seen as more yang than warm colours. Um, in many ways, you know, we kind of associate dark, you know, dark is heavy, it's a little bit more foreboding, it's a little bit more yang. It may depend on your colouring about whether you want to go there or not. Um, even thinking about kind of, you know, the shape of your hairstyle, is it soft and gentle and curly, is a little bit more edgy and structured. Uh, that also, you know, like, you know, what about your glasses if you wear glasses? All these things come into it. So have a look at my post about yin and yang and think about which design elements appeal to you. So you may not want big and bold and chunky, but you can upscale with many smaller pieces which work with your more delicate features into something larger scale. So instead of thinking like I haven't got one big solid piece, but this ring is made from many smaller pieces. It's a, still quite a large ring, but because it's made from many smaller pieces, it's a little bit more yin than if it was one solid piece. Uh, so you can think about things like that going, well, could I have some accessories that are made from many smaller pieces rather than one solid piece, particularly if you see a bit of skin through the different smaller pieces, it softens it down a bit, but it still has that emphasis, that boldness. Um, so yeah, they are some ideas for you to go and try out and you've got to work, you know, try out what works for you and what you like. 
uh, and to see, you know, how you want to express it. And it's the same as for someone who is the opposite thing, where they have a very yang personality and appearance. And they go, you know, I want to look more approachable and soft. And they need to take yin elements, out, you know, of design and put them into their outfits. But you've always got to take the bits that work for you. You don't have to take the whole lot. Um, and in fact, if you just did all yang, you'd find that it would be incongruent with who you are. And we, we'd kind of feel like it doesn't really work properly. So it's just taking a few of those uh, to to kind of express and, and give yourself a little bit of strength back if you feel that you're just becoming, you know, you've mentioned it too, inconsequential. And I hate to think that you think that about yourself. But if you feel like you're disappearing a little bit, it's thinking about how do I bring some strength back in and even things like leather versus suede. Leather is a, you know, is a, is a more yang fabric than suede is. So all those things to consider uh, when you are putting your outfits together. So hopefully that helps. I'll pop some links in here for you to find those blog posts as well, just to make it easier for you. Um, and please do keep sending me your questions, Imogen at insideoutstyleblog.com. I've also got lots of stuff about yin and yang in my Seven Steps of Style program. So we go into it in depth um, in, I think it's a step four or five or six, I can't quite remember now, <laughs> but we go into it in depth to really help you understand everything about uh, that and how you can use this concept to, you know, the best way for you as well. So if you're interested in discovering and defining your style, you know, so you can express who you are from the inside out and build a wardrobe full of clothes that you love to wear, do check that out as well. Because, you know, getting that style education stops you from making so many purchasing decisions that are not great, um, that end up costing you time, energy, money. And, you know, we have to wear clothes every day. So it's great to get the right information to help you uh, decide what to wear each day as well. Bye for now.